Welcome to the Bulletproof Screenplay Podcast, episode number 40. Everything is created twice, first in your mind and then in your reality. Robin Schwama. Broadcasting from a dark, windowless room in Hollywood, when we really should be working on that next draft, it's the Bulletproof Screenplay Podcast, showing you the craft and business of screenwriting while teaching you how to make your screenplay bulletproof. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome to another episode of the Bulletproof Screenplay Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Now, today's show is sponsored by Bulletproof Script Coverage. Now, unlike other script coverage services, Bulletproof Script Coverage actually focuses on the kind of project you are and the goals of the project you are. So we actually break it down by three categories, micro-budget, indie film market, and studio film. There's no reason to get coverage from a reader that's used to reading tentpole movies when your movie's going to be done for $100,000. And we wanted to focus on that at Bulletproof Script Coverage. Our readers have worked with Marvel Studios, CAA, WME, NBC, HBO, Disney, Scott Free, Warner Brothers, The Blacklist, and many, many more. So if you need your screenplay or TV script covered by professional readers, head on over to CoverMyScreenplay.com. And today's show is also sponsored by Indie Film Hustle TV, the world's first streaming service dedicated to filmmakers, screenwriters, and content creators. If you want access to filmmaking documentaries, feature films about filmmaking, interviews with some of the top screenwriters and filmmakers in Hollywood, as well as educational online courses all in one place, IFH TV is for you. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.tv. Before we start today, guys, I just want to lay out something very clearly, is that The Matrix is a documentary, not a film. And I'll explain what I mean in this episode. Now, the title of the episode is Why Filmmakers Are Programmed to Fail. And I wanted to go deep into this because it is something that has affected my life dramatically. And I really hope that this episode clarifies some things and brings some things to your conscious mind in a way that uh, it hasn't before. I want you to understand something that our lives are run by our subconscious mind. And I'll prove it to you. Did you drive a car today to work or anytime? Did you brush your teeth? Did you think about walking to the kitchen and making breakfast? All those kind of mechanical operations. Who was running that? Who was running the the car? Who was driving the car? Who was running the the shop when that was going on? Because your mind was somewhere else. You were thinking about problems or stress. Or you're thinking about why this movie that I'm working on is not getting made or I can't find the money. or And, and this is happening while you're driving a 2,000-pound piece of metal down a highway or you're walking down stairs or you're brushing teeth or you're running or jogging or any of these other kind of things. Even sometimes while you're talking to somebody else or listening to somebody else for that matter. These operations are run by your subconscious mind. It is not run by your conscious mind. You don't have the mental cognitive energy on a daily basis to run your entire system, if you will. And I'm going to use a lot of computer terminology because I think it really makes things a lot easier to understand. If you had to actually consciously think about getting yourself out of bed, putting your feet on the floor thinking about lifting yourself up, coordinate how you're going to walk and think about every single step while still watching everything around you so nothing hits you or bump into you, then go to the bathroom. All these things, all these morning rituals, I'm just talking about the morning rituals, let alone your daily rituals, all of that is run by your subconscious mind. That is all hardwired operating system. That is run by your personal operating system. The problem is that many of us are still running Windows 95 (laughs) and we really should be running that brand new Mac OS. I don't want to get into a Windows Mac thing. I'm just using it for an example, guys. Everyone calm the heck down. Now, I I want you to listen to this very carefully. That same operating system, that same subconscious mind that runs your day-to-day business, your daily operations, also keeps you where you are in life and on your filmmaking or screenwriting path. Let me repeat that. 
your subconscious, that same operating system is what is keeping you from what you are trying to obtain in your life and in, in your filmmaking and your screenwriting. I want you to understand that the construct that your subconscious has built has a need to protect itself in its own mind. Your subconscious does not like change or want change. Change is scary. Uncertainty is scary. But understand from an f- evolutionary perspective, this makes perfect sense. Stability and predictability is safe. Change is uncertain. Change might open you up to be eaten by a tiger or knocked over the head by a competitor while you're trying to you know, get food or, 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 or survive. But these mental models don't serve you anymore. And once you understand this, this is really life-changing, career-changing stuff. When you're about to embark on making a movie, let's say, and you haven't done it a million times before, that's scary. And your operating system is not happy about it, and it will kick in to protect you. In its mind, it's there to protect you on an evolutionary level. It's there to protect you. And any kind of change or modification in the code will kick in the agents. Agent Smith will come in and start sabotaging you and making things hard because it doesn't want you to go down that road. Now I'm going to throw another thing at you. Your operating system or programming is installed within the first seven years of your life. Now, this is scientifically proven. Hell, the Jesuits have been saying this for over 400 years. They said, give me a a, a child for seven years, and then I will show you the man that he will become. Because they knew that this seven-year period is when all the programming, all the OS is installed into you. Now, let me explain. In order to survive on this planet, your brain needs to build an operating system. When you come in, you're, you're a fresh hard drive. You got nothing in it. You don't have any, any beliefs. You don't have anything in it. You have, you have basic, basic, basic operating systems. How to breathe, how to cry for food, very basic stuff. But in order to survive in the, on the planet, you need to upgrade that operating system. So how do you do it? You watch your surroundings. You watch your parents, your siblings, your community, people that are around you. So whatever is going on around you in those first seven years, that is getting imprinted into your operating system. The ideas that you pick up in those first seven years set you up for life. That is what's going to run you for the rest of your life. If you don't believe you can be successful, if you don't believe that you're worth it, or if you don't believe that uh, whatever you don't believe, on a subconscious level, then you will create habits that will stop you from creating the things that you might want on a conscious level and sabotage yourself. That's what I've seen so many times with filmmakers that I'm like, why is that guy or that girl not moving forward? They're so talented and they're so experienced, but yet something seems to be stopping them. I don't know what. I'm not going to write it off as bad luck, but I'm just curious why that happens. I've seen it so many times in my experience working with filmmakers, thousands of filmmakers over the course of my career, that I kept seeing it again and again and again, and I wondered what that was. This simple reason is why poor people stay poor and rich people stay rich. It's because of the programming. Now think about it for a second. Lottery ticket winners, lottery winners, right? How many times have you heard somebody that has never had money in their entire life win $100 million? What happens? The majority of the time, they lose the money or they self-destruct because they don't have the programming to handle that kind of money. It's just not something that they know or how to deal with or even how to handle. Why is it that 65% of professional athletes lose a lot, if not all, of their money within five years of retiring? How many times have you seen athletes at signing tables somewhere Years later, when they were making $20 million a year, and years later, they're signing for 50 bucks, 150 bucks a signature. Why is that? Not in every case, but in some cases. It's the programming. If you think life is a struggle, if you say, this 
film business is just too hard. It'll never let me in. I'll never be successful. I'll never get my movie made. Guess what? If that's what you're saying to yourself, then you're right. Period. If that's the thoughts that are going in your head, you're programming yourself to fail. For years, I did this. For years, I was the angry, bitter filmmaker who was so upset at everybody else and looking at everybody else around me, you know, getting a leg up and I wasn't getting those opportunities. I'm like, why is it? Why is it? Why can't I get my shot? I'm sure many of you listening to now, right now have had that conversation in your head, maybe even this morning. Why am I not getting the shot? I'm good enough. I feel that I can do it. But yet I was programming myself, unbeknownst to me, I was programming myself to fail. And only when I made a change, only when I decided to just completely override my operating system did things change. When I finally got to a place where I could not take it anymore, I decided to make that change. And that's when I made my first feature, This Is Meg. Where from the moment I said I'm going to make the movie, it took me 30 days to start shooting that damn thing. And when I did, I didn't give my operating system time to even react. I was there. I was in it. I was doing it. And I just said, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep going. And I overrode my programming. I stopped those horrible mental constructs that I was creating for myself. These limiting beliefs that I kept repeating to myself again and again in the subconscious was listening. And all of my habits, all of the things around me that I was doing, the people that I was attracted to in the business, meaning people that would bring into my inner circle, all were reinforcing those negative, those bad thoughts that I was putting in my head, that bad programming. 95% of our lives comes from these programmings in the subconscious. Only 5% of your life is being lived consciously. Even if you think that you're at the driver's seat, you're not. In all areas of your life, health, career, love, money, creativity, relationships, every area of your life is run 95% by your subconscious mind, by that OS, by that operating system, that programming. So what is the solution? What can you do to change this? Step one, recognize where you are struggling in life. Just look at your life and ask, where am I struggling? Because if you're struggling in an area that the program or the OS is not supporting, guess what? You're going to have a problem. It's going to fight back at you. The Agent Smiths are going to come at you, and you're trying to be Neo, and you're trying to create new programming, change the system, change the matrix. And I'll give you an example. I've spoken about this a little bit before, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit more detail now. I've always had issues with my weight. And I know a lot of people out there listening because I've heard you guys uh, message me and, you know, and talk to me about this, that I've had issues with my weight all my life. Why? Because of the programming I had when I was a kid. You know, unfortunately, I had family members who were obsessed about their weight. And even though I wasn't when I was born, ask a baby what its thoughts are on its body fat or how their weight is, or how they look in jeans. (laughs) They don't think about things like that. That is all implanted. That is all programming based around what's around you. So I was programmed with this, that weight is a struggle. It's going to go up and down. I will never be thin. I will never be in shape. I will never have a six pack. All these thoughts were in my head. And I decided, you know, within the last six months, I said, that's it. The same way I changed my mind and changed the programming about my filmmaking career, I did the same thing with my health. And I said, that's it. I'm going to change. I did the same thing when I, was ve- when I went vegan. I said, enough's enough. I don't like the way I feel. I don't like what's going on in my body. I'm going to change. And for me, that was a good choice. Not for everybody, but for me, it was. So when I decided to change the programming about working out and change my habits, all of a sudden, I was the guy that wakes up at four o'clock in the morning to go work out. I am the guy that works out six days a week and is happy to do it. And like jumping out of bed, ready to go work out. I'm the one that watches what they eat and how they eat. 
They make good, healthy choices. Am I never going to eat a piece of cheesecake again? Of course not. I, of course, I'm going to indulge. But the point is that that programming has been shifted. And now it's such a habit that I can't go back. It would hurt. It would actually be very difficult for me to sit down and just pig out. Like it would be difficult in my head to do it because my programming is now shifted. I have reprogrammed myself. I am my own Neo in the matrix of my life. I'm so sorry with all the matrix puns. I apologize, but I'm just using it. I think it's a, a good, good way to illustrate the point. So that's step one. Recognize your struggle and focus on it. That's step one. Step two, it's time to upgrade your operating system. The conscious mind is creative. And it can learn from an audiobook, a podcast, an online course. And you can learn information that way and you can bring information in. But the subconscious mind does not work like that. The subconscious mind does not pick up those things. There's only two ways to program the subconscious mind to change that operating system. The first way is within the first seven years of life. That's one way. The second way is repetition. Practice, practice, practice. You didn't learn to drive a car in the first seven years of your life, but you learned how to drive a car, didn't you? You learned and you practiced until it was installed in your operating system. Now you don't even think about the process of driving. Look at any 16-year-old driving a car for the first time. One, it's hilarious unless you're in the car or around the car. But secondly... All their mental energy is focused on the task. They're a wreck. They're nervous. They're anxious. Why? Because that operating system is going haywire. Their urge, their want, their desire to drive is overriding their operating system. Their, their, their desire for freedom in that car is overriding their operating system, and their operating system is trying to handle it, is trying to deal with it. But they do it so much that finally it becomes hardwired and now it's cool. If you've been driving for years like I have, I've been driving since I was 16 years old, It, I don't even think about driving. I get in a car and I go. There's never nervousness. There's never anxiety about driving. I don't care. It's amazing. It's amazing once you start thinking about it. That's why Michael Phelps, the Olympic swimmer, can jump in a pool and just swim without even thinking about it. Why? Because he has done it a thousand times. Do you think that Steven Spielberg or Chris Nolan or David Fincher walk on a set and is nervous about the day or is nervous about the people that they're working with or about the process? Generally speaking, no. They might be nervous about the new elements that have been added in like story or actors or getting the performances that they want specifically about this. But the mechanical processes of directing. Do you think Spielberg gets nervous? Do you think Scorsese gets nervous? Of course not. That's home for them. That is the pool that Michael Phelps run, uh, jumps into. It's their home. So when you jump on a set for the first time, you're a nervous wreck because you don't know what's going on. You're trying to figure things out. You haven't done it before. So your operating system is going haywire. It's trying to stop you. But your desire to make that movie, your desire to write that screenplay is overriding your operating system. So this is where affirmations come into play. If you want to be a successful screenwriter or filmmaker, repeat every day, I'm a great writer. I'm a great filmmaker. I have the abilities needed to tell stories. I have the abilities needed to direct this film. Say it again and again and again to yourself. And the secret sauce to making this really, really transform your life is adding feeling. If you feel what you are saying, if there's an emotion attached to it, it will supercharge what you're doing in your subconscious. Feeling is so, so powerful. Think about a great time in your life and then how that makes you feel in your body. Think about a bad time in your life and see how that makes you feel in your mind and your body. When you add positive feeling, when you add real emotion to a thought that really and truly supercharges your transformation, that will begin to change your operating system. That will begin to change your subconscious mind. 
doing this with a combination of educating yourself on what you need to do or be is a game changer in your life. I'm not saying you're going to sit there and look in a mirror and go, I'm a great filmmaker and never pick up a book. But if you start to do that, that programming will start kicking in. And then all of a sudden, you're going to notice that other habits are going to start coming in. You're going to want to listen to audiobooks every day. You're going to want to listen to more podcasts. You might even want to start taking more online courses and start maybe, I know it's crazy, setting up time every day out of your busy day to educate yourself, to learn your craft, to add those tools in your toolbox. But it all starts with the subconscious because you could take a thousand, look, how many people here listening? And I know I can't, I can't get any hands up, but I'm sure that many people who are listening have taken an online course taught by some of the greatest masters of all time, but yet it hasn't moved the needle. Why is that? Why is that? How many thousands of podcasts have you listened to? How many online courses have you taken? How many audiobooks have you listened to? And yet, if you're not moving forward in what you're trying to do, what's holding you back? Could it be your operating system? Could it be your subconscious mind that is holding you where you need to be because that's where it wants you to be because it's safe and predictable on an evolutionary level? You've got to break through that mental barrier. You've got to break through that mental construct. It serves you no longer. If you want to be happy, repeat it again and again. And when your subconscious mind gets it, gets that programming update, then you won't have to say it anymore. Just like driving a car, just like learning your ABCs. How many times did you sing that darn song until you you can sing it off the top of your head now? Not ever have to think about your ABCs. Once your subconscious or operating system gets it, that is when you will start to create habits that will change your life and will change your filmmaking career and your screenwriting career in ways that you cannot even imagine. It has in my life, and like everything on this show, as I go through the journey of my filmmaking career, as at my creative career, my life, I try to share it with the tribe. If I find value and in information that I'm finding, I want to share it with you guys because these concepts that I've just laid out have changed my life for the better. I am healthier than I've ever been in my life. I'm in better shape than I've ever been in my life, even when I was in my 20s and even when I was working out with a trainer back then. I'm in better shape now. I can do things now that I was never able to do then. And this is less than six months, guys. I haven't been doing this for years. In less than six months, I've been able to drop almost 40 pounds. And I still got about another 15 or so that I want to get rid of because I got to get that six pack. Why? Not because of ego, because that's where I need to be. On a health standpoint, it allows me to do more for you guys, for my tribe, for my business, for what I do with my family and my life. That is what I've changed my programming to be. And it's changed my filmmaking career. I've done two movies where the first 40 years of my life, I hadn't done any. In the last couple of years, I've done two. And if I really wanted to, I could have probably done four or five movies this last year. But I had other fish to fry. I was writing a book, we're building up the, 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 you know, the podcast, doing all the things I had to do. But if I wanted to, I could have easily done that because I changed my programming. Now, I also don't want you just to write down on a post-it note in your bathroom that I'm a good filmmaker, I'm a better filmmaker, I am, I'm happy or whatever that is. That is a suggestion. You need to repeat it to yourself in your mind or out loud every day so your subconscious gets it and it will make a difference. I promise you it will make a difference in your life because it's made a difference in my life. I cannot tell you all the things that have changed in my life because of this bit of knowledge, this knowledge bomb that I got months ago. I want you to understand something that I'm about to release a book. I am a published author now. I never in a million years had a program in my head that I was a published, I could be a published author. Why? because I didn't have anybody around me that I knew that was one. I didn't know. It was something that somebody else did. 
But when I decide, I'm like, I'm going to write a book and I'm going to do it and it's going to get released and I'm going to get it published. And that's exactly what I did. Now, all of a sudden, I've got three or four books lined up that I'm writing. Why? Because my programming has changed. My programming is now telling me, oh, writing books is, is safe. You can do that. And when I come across new programming that I want to change, I'll change it. It's all within your power, guys. I want you to understand that the freedom for you to change your life, to change your filmmaking career, to change your screenwriting is all within your own power. It's inside of you. I just did an episode a little bit ago about meditation. It took me years of trying back and forth to be a meditator. Because in my mind, in my programming, I didn't have anybody around me that was a meditator. I didn't have any good role models. I didn't have any, any programming that could reinforce that. So I was like, ah, it's something that somebody else does. And I was just talking to a tribe member today, actually, who will remain nameless, but you know who, you're t- who, who you are, sir, where when they saw that episode title, they're like, oh, meditating, that's, that's for somebody else. I'm just going to keep hustling harder and harder, and I'm going to just keep working harder and harder. Because their programming told them that meditation, that's, that's something new. That's something scary. I don't want to go into that world. And they just wrote it off. Now, mind you, I am a guy who has a company called Indie Film Hustle. I wear a hat that has hustle, period, on it. I'm all about the hustle. I'm all about the work. It's about being smart about it. Using that energy properly. Hell, just even be able to get energy to do it properly which starts with your health and your mind and your mental health and your spiritual health, all of that stuff. That's where you have to go in order to move forward. Once again, guys, you have the power to change your life. Nobody outside of you, nobody anywhere else. If you're waiting for someone else to make you happy or to make your dreams come true, you're going to be waiting a long time. You're going to be waiting and waiting and waiting. It is a recipe for nothing but pain. Understand that. You need to take control of your life. You need to start making these decisions and these changes in your own life. And you have the information. There's no excuse anymore. The information that I've laid out in this episode can change your life. Your filmmaking life, your screenwriting life, your creative life and just your life in general. I really hope that this episode has helped you guys. Again, a lot of this information has helped me out dramatically in my life. And as I continue to find and discover new things, I will continue to relay them to you guys. I know you guys have been, I mean, getting giving me so many emails lately. I can't even tell you so many messages about these new series of podcasts that I'm doing that you guys are really digging it. So please, if you love these podcasts, please share them with as many people as you can. I want this information to get out there. I want my community. I want the tribe. I want filmmakers and screenwriters and people at large to get this information because it is just kind of earth-shattering kind of stuff. Because when you're able to change your life, then you can change lives around you. And when you can change lives around you, they can change lives. And so on and so on and so on. So I really hope this helped you guys out a lot. I'm going to put a couple of books in the show notes at IndieFilmMuscle.com forward slash 306 that might help you understand a little bit more about this process. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll leave you with this. This is your last chance. After this, there's no turning back. You can take the blue pill, and nothing will change in your life, and you will stay exactly where you are, and you will not move forward or towards the direction you want. Or you could take the red pill, And you can truly see how deep the rabbit hole goes. As always, keep on writing no matter what. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Bulletproof Screenplay Podcast at BulletproofScreenplay.com. That's B-U-L-L-E-T-P-R-O-O-F-S-C-R-E-N-P-L-A-Y dot com.